Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy Siskin. I'm the author of Playing Solo Jazz Piano, as well as the Jazz Piano Fundamentals series. And um, I've been studying modal jazz a lot, thinking about modal jazz theory a lot, how to teach it, how to learn it. And one of my conclusions is that there's a chord that I've kind of been ignoring or passing over as unimportant that I think is actually more important than I originally thought. And that chord is, ta-da, nope. <laughs> Ta-da! Ah, a sus7 flat nine chord. I think sus7 flat nine chords are actually really important harmonically in ways that I never previously realized. And so um, I want to talk about them, what to do with them, why they're important, what scales you can use with them. Um, and uh, so let's get into it. Yeah, no time to waste. So first of all, just like basics of what this chord is. So sus means that we're replacing the third with the fourth. So if we're doing C sus, seven flat nine, so instead of a C major or a C minor, it's going to be a C sus triad. Seven means dominant seventh here. Unless we see like triangle seven, seven means dominant seventh. And then of course the flat nine would be this note here. Okay. Let's just do another key. If we're gonna do G, so seven flat nine, it'd be a sus triad, a dominant seventh, and the flat ninth. Okay, now I think it's not without good reason that I relegated this <laughs> this chord to secondary qual uh, quality, like to the second second uh, second. Secondary status, I guess, is what I want, I want to say. Um, because you almost never see it in jazz standards. Like, hard-pressed to really think of, of many jazz standards that include this chord. Um, so for that reason, I've always kind of been like, eh, not that important. But why I do think it's important is I think that this is the main dominant sound that we want to use in a minor key in a modal set. I know that was a lot of qualifications. So if we're in a modal setting, uh, here, it's easier to say it like this. I've got a minor two, five, one in C. Relatively common progression, right? If I want to make this sound modal, then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lasso these guys and I'm going to replace them with a G sus seven flat nine. And actually, this isn't that weird. You might think, what the hell? What are you doing? But I believe that in a major two, five, one, if we wanna make this sound more modal, we're gonna lasso these guys, we're gonna make it a G sus seven, natural nine. But in a minor key, we're gonna have that flat nine. So it's actually not that crazy that we're going to have a G sus seven flat nine. So, you know, your original, Let's start with the major two, five, one on bottom. I just want you to hear this. So, and here, why don't you look at what I'm playing? I'm not keeping any secrets here. Okay. So if I wanna make it more modal, I'm just gonna have. And once I have this sus chord, I can do so many things with it. So a minor two five one now. Now we're going on top. You can replace that. And so now I can do all those same fancy modal things. Now, all right, I, I'm, I'm reticent to get into this because it's super nerdy, but question might be, 
why would we change these things if we want it to be modal? Don't all chords kind of have a mode? And the answer is when we play modal jazz, we want to need to be using sounds, be using chords that only have whole steps above the chord tones. I'll say that one more time. If we're playing in a modal context, we need to be choosing modes and using modes that only have whole steps above the chord tones. And so when we have a dominant chord, unless we change something about it, we have G7, our chord tones are G, B, D, F. We're traditionally going to use the Mixolydian mode. So we're going to have an A above one chord tone, a C, an E, and a G. So having an A B above the C is cool, having an E above the D is cool, having an F above the G is cool, having the C above this B is not cool. That's a half step above the chord tone rather than a whole step. So one solution, we could make it a C sharp, which becomes Lydian dominant, possible. But if we don't want to really change that sound, then we can use a sus chord, right? G, C, D, F. Now, if we're using the Mixolydian mode, nowhere do we have a half step above a chord tone, right? We have G is above F, A, and assumedly B is above C, and then we have E, right? Same thing if we have G sus 7 flat 9, you might say, well, that flat 9 is a, a half step above G, but then that flat 9 becomes a chord tone. And so we have G, A flat, C, D, and so then we probably have a B flat and an E above these chord tones. Okay. So that's the general theory of why we choose these sus chords when we go into modal jazz. Another way to think about it is that we don't like using a leading tone in modal jazz because the leading tone by its very name makes things tonal, right? That is what we refer to when we refer to tonal music, it's music with a leading tone. So by having the sus chord, we eliminate the tonalness of it. <laughs> Everybody stop watching this video. If you're still left, congratulations, you are committed. Okay, so now this is a fascinating chord. What scales do we use with it? And first answer is Phrygian. All right, Phrygian is the third mode of the major scale. And some people would argue that you don't want to use it much. I've always said that, but I think in a minor two, five, one, we want to use Phrygian. to substitute for the two and the five chord. Um, and the beautiful thing about using modes of the major scale like Phrygian is that every mode of the major scale has three pure pentatonic scales within it. So any mode of the major scale is going to have three pentatonic scales. So if we're using G Phrygian, for instance, we're gonna be able to use B flat, um, B flat, E flat, and A flat, Phrygian, uh, pentatonic scales, <laughs> E flat, A flat, and what else did I say? B flat, pentatonic scales within that. And that's important because with those pentatonic scales, we can get these pure soa voicings, which are made from the pentatonic, and they don't have any tritones in them. Boy, I'm talking over everybody's head, I think, but it makes sense to me. Pentatonic scales, because they are, uh, well, pentatonic scales are these very pure sounds that don't have dissonances. I could talk about them for a long time, um, but they're going to be able to create these really beautiful, pure sounding um, chords. So Phrygian, as compared to the major scale, so G Phrygian compared to G major has flat two, flat three, flat six, and flat seven. Option one, especially in terms of forming chords. Now, option number two for a sus seven flat nine 
is Phrygian raised six, which you could name it a few different ways. So Phrygian raised six or Phrygian natural six, it's a mode of the melodic minor. I'm alienating everybody today. <laughs> you guys, you got it by the book. <laughs> it's all going to make more sense when you read the book. Um, okay, and so this would just have flat two, flat three, and flat seven, but as you see from the name raised six, oh, I read it twice, I went to say natural six. It's going to have the sixth from the major scale, so G, Phrygian raised six would be. I think some people also call this Dorian flat two, because it is the same as Dorian, just with a lower second. I will add that to my little document here. So this is very attractive for melody making. That six is like bright and sparkly to me. So. Now the weird thing about it is that the E natural, if I'm playing in the C minor, is going to be the major third of the overall key. So it's going to be really bright to darker. And so perhaps for that reason, this might work better if it were like G sus that happened to lead to a major sound, right? Very sparkly sounding like that but definitely a possibility to use that Phrygian raised six or Dorian flat two. And then thirdly, um, is that we can use the, uh, the fifth mode of the harmonic minor, which is also, you know, something that we use for like a regular G dominant seventh flat nine, but works really nicely as well with a sus, um, with a sus flat nine. So um, we're talking here C minor. C harmonic minor, starting on G. Sounds a little bit more exotic with that B natural in there. tends to sound less modal because it's using a melodic, you know, or sorry, it's using a, a minor scale with, that includes the leading tone, um, but it does work pretty well. So just keeping this chart going, this is a flat three, uh, that's not right, <laughs> has a flat two and a flat six. So that's as compared to G major. Um, So I would use these in this order, Phrygian as your top choice, Phrygian raise six as your second choice, especially if you're resolving to major. And then that mode of the harmonic minor does work pretty well. Uh, I would use that if you're trying to go for a slightly more tonal thing. So I think that's my, my little TED talk um, about the sus seven flat nine chord. It's a chord that I've really ignored for a long time, but again, I think it's actual like, incredible use is that in a minor two five one it can substitute for the two and the five and give a more modal sound thank you for listening um by the time this video comes out you should be at least ready to pre-order jazz piano fundamentals book three on my site if it's not completely available so uh do that you're gonna love it and comment with jpf3 in the comments thanks for watching everybody